Hi, John. Uh, nice to see you again here. And uh, could you say something about your concept about this biotensegrity in the 21st century? Okay, well, first of all, I'll hold the microphone. First of all, the uh, idea of biotensegrity uh, comes from Dr. Stephen Levin, who uh, was an orthopedic surgeon, now retired. Uh, the idea of tensegrity came from uh, the mind of Buckminster Fuller. Mm -hmm. um, but Buckminster Fuller, although he could explain mathematically the tensegrity uh, structure, he could never bring it to life. That seems a, a little strange today because we see so many tensegrities yeah, uh, and we think, oh, it's easy. Well, really, it, 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 it was easy to, uh, well, not easy, but they could actually do the mathematical equations, but they could not conceive the image of a tensegrity in their mind. And in fact, it was Kenneth Snelson, mm -hmm. who was um, an artist who created, this created animal the, yes, based on we, Buckminster yes. Fuller's work. And now we know through um, research by Donald Ingber, uh -huh. who's in uh, Harvard Medical School in the Children's Hospital, uh -huh. and Donald Ingber's work and others have demonstrated that the uh, tensegrity, which we call an, an icosahedron, is the basic architecture of all living life. Mm -hmm. So from, from bacteria right up to, to elephants or giraffes. Okay. So this is the architecture of every cell in the human body. Mm -hmm. And then you can scale it up to tissue, to tissue level and to organ level and to, okay. you know, the organism. So there are certain rules, we'll say, around tensegrity that if we are biotensegrity, then those rules have to apply. Mm -hmm. And if they have to apply, that means that when I do this, this looks like a lever system, mm -hmm. but in tensegrities there are no levers. Okay. So in, uh, in uh, okay. biomechanics they speak about um, joints, pin joints, and a pin joint would require two bones to overlap and for a pin to go between them. But of course we, we actually have virtual space Mm -hmm. between our bones, so we don't have pin joints. So this once again supports the idea of, of biotensegrity. Mm -hmm. But there are some, uh, I'll finish by saying this, and if you have a second okay, question, yeah, but yeah. there are some diff very difficult questions um, that people struggle with, and they think that they're going to understand biotensegrity quickly. It's, it's not a quick process. It actually takes many years. Uh, you have yeah. to invest. And it becomes a little frustrating because we have to try to leave behind uh, what has been ingrained in us. For me, for instance, I'm over 30 years uh, involved in, in anatomy. And so one could say that I'm almost institutionalized, but I'm, I'm lucky I'm not. And so, for instance, in the human body, you cannot have shear. Yet people talk about shear all the time. Okay. But in a biotensegrity, it's not possible to have shear. In a tensegrity, it is possible because there's no breath, there's no life in a tensegrity. But in a biotensegrity, we don't have shear. So these are some of the complicated uh, okay, aspects of the topic. Interesting. And uh, I love when you show us uh, the eggs, like eggs before the, the embryogenetic. Um, and so it's interesting because usually we think about the tensegrity like uh, some form, but this form is have a no, not outside, but when you see, you can see the, the, the um, beginning of the life, we see, we can see the, this pelliculas around the, the so these pelliculas, could you say something about this? Because I, I, I love these ideas. Okay, so uh, in, in embryology, um, there are some assumptions that are made. It's very difficult to carry out research Mm. Uh, you know, related to embryology. Uh -huh. And much of the knowledge that we do have um, comes from sources like Blechsmith. And, uh, but however, again, there is a, conv a convenience of language that is used where, for instance, they will talk about the marola. Yeah. There is no marola in human embryology because we have the zona pellucida. We have a, an outer membrane. And having an outer membrane means that the membrane is compressing in. And so this creates a reaction so that the embryo and the inner matrix needs to push 
out. Mm. Now we have opposing forces. And opposing forces now mean that as the cells begin to multiply, space becomes an issue, and so we start to see infinite variations in tension and compression. So now we have a, a marriage of DNA, RNA, and so on, inscription, mm -hmm. and the epigenetic aspect, in other words, Wonderful. the environment and the tensions and compression, which are now ultimately having a very significant effect in the development of the, of the tissues. But of course, the beauty of what, what, what you've seen yesterday yeah, yeah. was that you start with one embryonic soup and then everything is immersed in that soup. Yeah, so you get specialization, but you get continuity, not contiguity. Yeah, These yeah. are two different words. Contiguity is two separate things coming together. Continuity is, is one, it oneness. Is one. And this helps to really explain, it's, it's one of the early steps in explaining why somebody can have a problem in the right shoulder, but perhaps it's emanating from the opposite side of the body, okay. you know, contralateral. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. No, delighted. It is, <laughs> it's Hopefully amazing. I'll get to see uh, our fascia friends in yes. Brazil in the not too distant future. So, people in Brazil, we are inviting our um, friend John Sharkey to go to, to Brazil next year, maybe, if not next year, 21, because you need to know this guy. This is very, very smart. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, guys.